Have you ever looked back at a project you started and decided maybe it was just best to start over? Not me. I write perfect code every time. Except maybe this one time. Hello and welcome to DevHack. I'm your host, Dade. And I'm your co-host, Adam. And this is our very first episode. DevHack is a new series on the Hack5 YouTube channel where developers and hackers come together to learn best practices and build better software. On uh, series one, season one, we're going to be building a network scanning orchestration platform, things like, you know, Nmap and maybe looking for subdomains, that sort of thing. Uh, asset inventory is, is a hard problem. A lot of organizations just kind of struggle to solve it. The first step to building out a good asset inventory is to know what you already have on your network. Uh, maybe you can't tie that to an individual person, but you know that it's there. And so how do you find what's on your network if you don't have a place to look to tell you what's on your network? Well, you scan. Well, Dave, um, you know, this sounds like something that has already been done before, like security and post-sec has become a very big, important industry. Like, is there no other software already out there? Yeah, there are lots of lots of options out there. Uh, a lot of like bug bounty hunters have built kind of platforms to make it really easy to scale wide. Uh, there's a lot of like commercial options that might be prohibitively expensive for like a small organization or for a nonprofit or something like that. Uh, all of the non-commercial options are very focused on like living in the terminal. They're not really user friendly. You have to kind of know the the domain of the problem that you're working in in order to better, you know, understand the output of the tools. Um, so kind of our goal is to make something that kind of sits squarely in the middle and is available for anybody to run, you know, just free off of GitHub or off of, off of Docker hub. Um, so for a little bit of context, uh, I'm Dade, I'm a hacker. I've never really been a professional developer. So I know like the problem domain well. I've I've scanned a lot of networks before. Uh, I was red team for like five years, but I don't really know how to build quality software that kind of scales up for an actual organization to use. And for background, I'm Adam. I am a developer. I've spent six years working at a major tech company where I've spent a lot of time designing, developing software, thinking about architectures, good class structures, how to make things scalable, testable, uh, extensible, and just solving business problems. Yeah, so I think, you know, between between Adam and I, uh, our powers combined, maybe we can build one platform, learn a little bit from each other along the way, uh, have better software ar architecture, learn how to better plan projects, the types of challenges that you know, we as a security team might face the types of challenges that like developing a big project like this might face uh, and just kind of generally learn from each other and hopefully you learn from us as well. Uh, so for a little background, uh, this is a, a problem space that Adam and I have both already done a little bit of work on before uh, via a project called Natlas. The Natlas project uh, started in 2015 or 2016 as another project called nweb and it was basically like take nmap and put it into a web a web like a searchable interface on the web uh, that way you could have a team of people all looking at the same results and then as it grew uh, i kind of took over as the maintainer renamed natlas built out some more more functionality for it but it was always just this very iterative process of like we already have this thing built so I'm going to add this feature or I'm going to add this, like, this is what, what we immediately need. And there wasn't really any thought about like the long-term benefits, uh, or like the long-term direction of the project. So, uh, I think for today, maybe we can talk about some of those, some of those issues that made, made it difficult to keep developing, uh, talk about maybe ways that we can improve them in the future. Um, and I think that to kind of start us off there, uh, I didn't realize a lot of the problems that. I had in, in the way that I chose to develop this until I started talking to Adam and brought Adam in to help me figure out kind of how, some of the hard problems that I was facing. Uh, so Adam, what do you think were some of like the, the big problems that Natlas faced? Mm -hmm. So just to start off, like with any software project, um, you know, 
you can keep on hacking on it, hacking on it, and adding to it, and you usually can get something to work. But sometimes stepping back and thinking about best practices and architecture and, and just fixing some of the issues will help you move faster, help you become more extensible, and um, solve more problems more quickly, which is ultimately what you want to do. And, you know, some of the problems that we kind of found, Dade, was that, um, you know, you had this application server uh, running Flask in Python. And the application server itself, it had state in it, tracking um, where you were in the, the scan, like which host was next to run. And if this was stored as a, as a global variable in, in that process, which means that you can't run multiple instances. And this is a very common scaling pattern to run to horizontally add more and more instances of your, of your web server. Um, and then, but if you have variables in one host, you can't scale it. Um, and that, that's just kind of a common practice in, in modern software developments is to run multiple instances. Another thing was, you know, data models uh, were not really clearly defined. You data model is kind of any sort of class structure or model that represents um, the data that you're storing. Like in this case, it was a is a scan. Um, what host had what ports open, etc. You know, they were not clearly defined, and we were taking the results from Nmap and directly uploading them into our database. Um, which is not really how you want to think about your data models. It's you want to m model your data model based around how you query it, access it, and abstractly as opposed to highly coupled to one particular uh, scanning system. And there's no specification for the API either. Um, the API kind of was just developed however uh, it made sense at the time. And there was you know, we didn't use anything like Swagger or anything else to define an API in a logical and extensible way. Um, so adding new features later meant that you just kind of had to duct tape it on again and add a field here, add a field there, and it wasn't extensible. Yeah, yeah, I think that those all uh, really captured some of like the really difficult backwards, backwards compatible types of changes, right? It was like, even for the data models, we were just tacking it on because there was no, there was no data model. You just, you want this new field in the database, you just put it there and it's there. And like, you didn't have to think about it at all. Um, at least that's how I put it there. Cause I was like, ah, well, I need to get this, this new feature supported as quickly as possible and everything is already jank. So I'm just going to like keep going in the jank direction, you know, um, yeah, and I think I think kind of other other problems that now has faced was like we were trying to solve too many problems at once. Um, I had this kind of dream of like a community driven scan platform where uh, I could host a server or somebody else could host a server and users could sign up and contribute their own compute power to scanning whatever was in scope and like you could you know eventually maybe have like high scores of like the people who are scanning the most uh that sort of thing but the problem with that was that it just never really happened uh it was always missing like the things that would draw somebody to want to do that and meanwhile like the single user or like a single team using it like that was that was always the primary use case that was what we used it for uh, when it was originally developed and it's what we continued to use it for. And it's what everybody that I talked to who used it, used it for. But like, I was still kind of insistent on like, Hey, we should still support this community mode. We should still support, you know, all these features that like nobody was using and probably nobody knew existed. And because it wasn't being used, I also wasn't developing it. So it kind of got into this like chicken and an egg problem where nobody used it because it didn't have the features and it didn't have the features because nobody used it. So, um, you know, it was, it was very, the, the target audience, uh, the people who were using it, it w wasn't very clearly defined. Like, I think I knew in my head who the target audience was, but it wasn't the same as who I wanted the target audience to be. And there was like a bit of a, a difference there. Um, and then I think finally, like, you know, when, when Natlas originally started, uh, like the deployment story was not great. 
uh, you had to like go spin up your own uh, VPS or spin up your own like compute instances somewhere. And then you had to run a bash script that was like riddled with problems because I've never written a good bash script in my life. And uh, like, it, it just, it wasn't very, wasn't very reliable, wasn't very repeatable. Um, and then even once I invited Adam to start working with me on it, uh, we, we got Docker in place, but then I still wanted to like support the bash script instead of like just moving to a Docker native type of thing. Uh, and it, that, that took a lot of like, like struggle. Um, but then even once we got everything onto Docker, it was like, okay, well, what's our like deployment? Are we going to like deploy only on AWS? Are we going to deploy only, uh, in Kubernetes that, you know, how are we going to deploy? And that was like a real, if you don't know the answer to that question, then like when it comes to time to start building certain features, uh, things like service to service authentication, stuff like that, uh, it gets really difficult to like determine like, okay, how are we going to build this? Cause we don't, we don't know where we're going to deploy. All we know is that we've got some Docker containers. Uh, and so I think that I, I was very insistent on kind of reinventing the wheel inside of the application instead of like relying on these external systems. Um, so I think, uh, you know, with all of those kind of complications in mind, uh, maybe we can start fresh. We can have a little bit more planning. Um, you know, I think starting from scratch is, is maybe a good, a good way to go. Um, yeah. What do you think, Adam? Well, you know, when you start fresh, you always have the, the risk of, you know, have to you have to reinvent everything that works today um, to fix the things that you don't like. So, you know, are we sure we want to start fresh? You know, is there anything that we can do to save Nalys as it exists today? Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of the, a lot of like the technology choices in Nalys just generally aren't uh, kind of the right choices for the job. I feel like, it was it was done because this is what was easy at the time. Um, I feel like it's a, lo a lot of things are going to uh, be backwards incompatible, which uh, you know I I'm sure you've seen that that XKCD um, about how like every change breaks somebody's workflow. Uh, I feel like whatever the next changes are gonna gonna be for Nalys it's going to break everybody's workflow, not just somebody's. So, uh, if we're already going to have to break everybody's workflow, maybe we can use that as an opportunity to, uh, start from scratch and like define the API right away, define the data model right away. Maybe use like a better, better set of tools to get the job done. Um, and so I think like, if we talk about kind of the desirable features that we want in the new platform, uh, I think it's kind of the flip side of, of our complications. Right. So like, what do you think? Yeah, I think we've discussed a number of different things that we want to do and a, a number of them involve like changes, the core core code structure and class structure. Um, and that, that actually might make sense to just rebuild it from scratch. Um, things that we've discussed, some of the simpler ones are just stateless server, uh, kind of like a best practice is just the server horizontally scale up down as we need it and all of our state is stored in a, a database of some sort um and then we've also talked about using defined data models that we we think about up front ahead of time before we start coding and using things like pydantic which is a really cool library that you actually introduced me to um, that makes python a little bit more structured in the in the classes that you write and then leverage one of my favorite strategies, which is domain driven development, which is where you really spend your time thinking about what is the domain? What is, what is the problem that you're trying to solve and come up with structures related to that, as opposed to let's write some classes in, in code and see what happens. Cool. And then another thing is uh, like, you know, AP, API first development. It's kind of a practice where you don't even start writing code. You just kind of use swagger 
or similar to define your APIs based around that, that domain that you previously defined and write API models that, um, that kind of match that and are extensible. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, I think that sounds reasonable. We can, we can focus on kind of the planning aspects before we, uh, jump into just like, here's some, here's the minimum viable platform, you know? Um, I think, you know, kind of uh, to further simplify things and, and to get us kind of on the right track for development, we can also focus on like kind of the core use case, which is like one, one person or a trusted team of people deploying this to scan their organization's network or to scan, uh, you know, their internet footprint or something like that. Um, and then we can also kind of focus on like a more clear and consistent deployment story. Uh, I think that choosing to not couple us to any particular deployment story was introduced a lot of challenges. And so maybe like, we'll just say, all right, we're going to be Docker first. Like we only support deploying as a Docker container. And also we only support, uh, like orchestration wise, we support deploying in a Kubernetes cluster, right? Cause like Kubernetes is, is nice in that regard because we don't have, you know, we're not, we're not tied to like a single vendor specifically, uh, Kubernetes is available kind of everywhere. Now you can run it yourself. Uh, so you can run it inside, inside your corporate network, or you can run it in the cloud or whatever else. Uh, I think that that kind of all comes together and, and works pretty well. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, we haven't really, we haven't really started to dig into any of this stuff yet, but, uh, I think it gives us, it, it paints a good picture of where we're going in the, in the future episodes. As always, you can follow along with our progress on GitHub, test it out, fork it, fix it, make feature requests, whatever else you want to show your interest, uh, github.com slash natlas slash natlas. This is where it currently lives. That's where the new version will live as well. You can also submit questions, comments, and feedback down below in the comment section. Or if you prefer to send us an email, you can reach us at devhack at hack5.org. If you made it this far and you like what we're doing, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see what we're doing next time. If you really like what we're doing, you can toss a couple of bucks our way on Patreon, but don't feel like you have to. We're just doing this for fun. I've been Dade. And I'm Adam. And we put the over into over engineering. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.